is Friday, August 7th, and this is Gemma Malaris with KCAT TV 15 News at Noon. In today's local news, two educational dilemmas, a meth-intoxicated Tarzan, and another California wildfire. In honor of back-to-school season, we'll start off the day with a story on San Francisco's education system. In San Francisco, the education system is in trouble. Due to outrageously expensive housing in the city, the district cannot hire enough teachers. Lita Blanc, head of the San Francisco Teachers Union, stated that among young teachers, it's their number one concern. I hear it all the time. I can't stay in the district if I can't find a place to live. Housing prices have exploded so much in recent years that $70,000 a year is incapable of financially supporting a Californian. Going on with news of the Education Department, officers are looking for two men who robbed a UC Berkeley student at gunpoint on campus early today. According to campus police, the robbery occurred around 12.30 a.m. as a male student walked through Spikier Plaza between Haas Pavilion and Zeller Blotch Hall. He was approached by two men, including one who pulled out a silver handgun and stole the student's wallet and cell phone. The robbers then ran away before they could get caught. Officers responded to a call reporting the incident and searched the area, but did not find the assailants. The police did not provide a detailed description of the robbers, but it was released that no injuries were reported. On Tuesday morning, a shirtless man who covered himself in mud was swinging in the trees at the Santa Ana Zoo. As he climbed around the exhibits, he shouted at people that he was Tarzan. Kent Yamaguchi, the zoo director, called 911 and explained the situation. Santa Ana officers held a brief chase after the man, known as 36-year-old John William Roddenborn, who later tasted, tested positive to meth because of its existence in his car. He was arrested but will be released soon. It is still unknown how Roddenborn got into the zoo due to the fact that he did not trespass through the employee entrance or pay for an admission ticket. A brush fire burned nearly an acre near Moraga and sent billows of smoke visible from Oakland on Friday morning, a Moraga or Indo fire official said. Around about 25 firefighters responded to the 6.17 a.m. call reporting a vegetation fire near Pinehurst Road and the, the community of Canyon, an unincorporated Contra Costa Fire con County area. Crews from Cal Fire and Moraga Oranda Fire District contained the blaze by 7.25 a.m. No buildings, homes, or lives were threatened by the blaze between Moraga and Oakland Hills. However, fallen power lines led authorities to close traffic in both lanes of Pinehurst Road near John McCoster Ranch Road and led police to urge motorists to avoid Pinehurst Road between Canyon Road and Skyline Boulevard. PG&E crews were called to the area to repair the power lines. The cause of the fire is still under investigation. With more and more wildfires in California, I'm starting to get worried about our environment. Katie, can you help us with California's weather? Will do, Jenna. Okay, did anybody else notice all the lightning, thunder, and rain last night? That came as a surprise. It looks like El Nino is coming early. Both me and my dogs got the heebie-jeebies. Today, expect partly cloudy size skies throughout the day with wind speed at 5 miles an hour and clear skies tonight with a high of 83 and a low of 58. Tomorrow, we'll have a high of 85 and a low of 57 with clear skies. On Sunday, the temperature will increase slightly with a high of 87 and a low of 58 with some clouds. For Monday, expect a high of, 50, of 85 and a low of 59, 59 with more blue skies. Then, on Tuesday, we'll have more a high of 85 and a low of 57 with clear skies. That's it for your five-day forecast. Now for national weather. Next week brings the annual Parasids meteor shower. This year, there will be no moonlight to upstage the shower, which means that it will be dark enough to see all the shooting stars. The official meteor shower starts this Tuesday and ends on Friday, August 14th, but the stars will be best on the 13th, especially at the pre-dawn hours. At the peak of the meteor shower, there can be upwards of 70 shooting stars per hour. NASA stated that the Persid shower is one of the best, so make sure to step outside and check it out. On to international weather. Typhoon Sodalor is closing in on Taiwan, and the lives of millions are being threatened by it. This typhoon is unreasonably deadly due to its 100 mile per hour winds and its two eyes, which means that the typhoon is a combination of two storms. 
This typhoon is recorded as the largest cyclone this year and is the equivalent of a Category 3 on the wind scale. Taiwan is taking shelter because Solador is coming as soon as Saturday does this week. On the other side of the world, Typhoon Hilda is expected to, come to continue growing as it moves toward Hawaii and now has a maximum sustained speed of 60 miles per hour. However, Hilda is expected to stay over water for the next five days, which may turn the storm northwest. After this short break, we'll take it to Ross Hong on location at the Forbes Mill Museum. Honey, it's gonna be okay. It's dead. Maybe it's just that It's dead. Well, we'll get you a new one. It won't be the same. You're right. Could be plasma. Hey, your TV's dead. I'm okay with this. Now you can recycle it and keep California's environment alive. Visit erecycle.org for more. Different words describe different people. But in the eyes of the law, there's one that fits us all. Human right number seven. We're all equal before the law. What are human rights? Find out at youthforhumanrights.org. In 1880, the Forbes Mill became the center of a little California town in Los Gatos. Since then, it has undergone major changes regarding what a host and what the building actually looks like. Unfortunately, this amazing history museum just recently closed. Now they just reopened as a new Forbes Mill Museum. They will be open from, Friday, from Monday to Sunday. history of Los Gatos, now on to national news. Mitch Adrian from southeastern Michigan was caught with a backpack stuffed with dirty socks that he brought to a couple who wanted to buy a pound of marijuana. In court, 33-year-old Michael Rafael Suarez of Yplisti said that Adrian didn't bring any weed and had a bag of dirty socks instead. He will face up to seven and a half years of imprisonment when sentenced on September 3rd. Authorities say that $2,800 in cash was taken from the couple as the man told the cops that Adrian had robbed them. Last night, the top 10 GOP presidential candidates each had a few minutes to capture the nation's voters. As we know, Donald Trump is said to be the Republican frontrunner. Besides Rand Paul, many of the candidates avoided attacking Trump. Paul said that the billionaire buys and sells politicians of all stripes and accused him of hedging his bet on the Clintons. Rand Paul took any chance he got to attack his competitors. He was eager to grab headlines by speaking his opinion even when, it wasn't, when, even when he wasn't called on. Christie and Paul were going at each other throughout the night. Paul accused the New Jersey governor of hugging President Obama before the 2012 election. To that comment, Christie said, Senator Paul, you know the hugs I remember are the hugs I gave to the families who lost their people on September 11th. Now on to international news. The Thailand Inheritance Tax Act of 2015 says a 5% tax will be imposed on inherited assets worth more than 100 million baht, or $2.8 million, for parents or direct descendants, and 10% for others. The act became a law with its publication this week in the Royal Gazette, after passage in May by the Intern Interim National Legislative Assembly. The Gazette said that the person the purpose of the law was to combat social injustice arising from the economic inequality and to use the revenues to develop the country. Finance Minister Samani Fossi has said that the government expects to collect 4 billion baht or $113 million per year from the tax. The measure, which goes into effect 180 days after its August 5th publication, was part of a package of tax reforms sought by the military government that took power after a coup last year. It is less ambitious than what the government originally sought, which was a tax rate of 10% on the lower threshold of 50 million baht, 
or $1.4 million. Just yesterday, the North Korean Central News Agency announced that on August 15th, Korea will turn their clocks back 30 minutes to create Pyongyang time, a new time zone. This will mark the 70th anniversary of Korea's liberation from Japan at the end of World War II. The reason of this sudden change was to completely break away from Japan in every way. In Bangladesh, an unknown and armed man with a machete attacked a 40-year-old blogger, Niall O'Neill. The blogger was known to be a supporter of atheistic views and an opposer of religious radicalism. This is the fourth recorded murder by Islamist of a secular blogger in Bangladesh. According to local police, the man invaded the apartment of the blogger in Dhaka, the capital of Bangladesh. Imran Sakar, the head of a local network of activists, noted that Neil had a strong voice of religious extremism. The murdered blogger was a participant in the movement that demanded death penalty for leaders of the Islamists. Radical Islamists are known for their intolerance to opposition, which explains the reason for this murder. We'll be back with sports after these quick messages. the best one. Yeah. Right, bye. I'll just remember to say that. Sure. Welcome back, Liz Gas. Now to your sports newscast. Aaron Rodgers has a high chance to be able to claim his second consecutive NFL MVP award in 2012 based on his start this season. Right now, Rodgers has one May competitor vying for the same honor, Peyton Manning. Manning of the Denver Broncos has already won the NFL MVP award four times in his illustrious career. Manning has led the Broncos to the division lead of the AFC West with a 5-3 record, plus has to put up very good numbers as a passer. Manning has thrown 20 touchdown passes compared to six interceptions for 2,404 yards and has an NFL leading 108.6 quarterback rating. In Rodgers' last four games, he has thrown 15 touchdown passes compared to just one pick. The Packers have won every one of those games too. Last season, Rodgers threw 45 touchdown passes versus just six picks for 4,643 yards. He has also had 122.5 quarterback rating, which is the best ever mark in the NFL. Currently, the Packers would be the number five seed in the NFC playoffs, as well as a top wild card selection. But that could change significantly as the Packers will play NFC North opponents five times in the in the last seven weeks of the 2012 season. Bottom line, Rodgers looks like he has a very good chance to equal or surpass the touchdown passes he threw last season, which was 45. One thing's for sure, Aaron Rodgers has definitely played like an MVP the past four games and may be able to steal his second consecutive NFL MVP award. That's all the news we have today. Thanks for tuning in to News at Noon. Also, a good thanks to our camp counselors, Jay and Nick. This has been Jenna Malaris with KCAT TV 15. I'll see you on the flip side, Los Gatos.